Welcome to my video on gears and gear ratios. If you've been building robots already, you're probably familiar with gears, but you know how they work. Let's start with gear properties. Two important properties of this spur gear, that is what this type of gear is called, are gear count and gear pitch. Gear count is the number of teeth around the gear and can be simply found by counting out the teeth. As you can see, the gear count on this gear is 36. Gear pitch is how large the teeth are on a gear. It is the whole number ratio of the number of teeth to the diameter of the gear. For our sample gear, this is 36 teeth divided by 1.5 inches which gives us a pitch of 24. In order for gears to work in a system, they must have the same pitch. As you can see with the two gears with a 24 pitch, they can have their teeth into mesh. Whereas a gear with a 24 pitch and another gear with a 48 pitch, their teeth will not match up. A very important concept to understand for gear systems is input and output. Input is where the energy comes to turn the gear. For most robots, this would be an electric motor. The output is where the energy is transferred to, such as a wheel. For the purposes of this video, we're going to keep things simple and use a knob to provide the input energy for the gear system. Two additional terms which are used with gear systems are the driving gear, which is provided with the input energy, and the driven gear, which transfers the energy to the output. When there is an even number of gears in a gear system, the output gear rotates in the opposite direction from the input gear. An even number of gears would not work very well for a drive system because the wheels would work against one another. However, an even number of gears would work very well for a pair of grippers on a claw. When there is an odd number of gears in a gear system, the output Input gear rotates in the same direction as the input gear. Any gears between the input gear and the output gear are called idler gears. The size of the idler gears do not affect the output. An odd number of gears works very well for a drive system but you can probably guess what would happen with some grippers. The next important concept dealing with gears is the concept of gear ratios. The first type of gear ratio we will be talking about is a gear ratio which is geared up. This happens when an input gear is larger than the output gear. In this example of a geared up gear ratio, the driven gear has 12 teeth and the driving gear has 36 teeth, which gives us a gear ratio of 1 to 3. This means the input gear will spin once, and the output gear will spin three times, which means the output gear is spinning three times as fast as the input gear. However, because the input gear is three times the size of the output gear, it takes three times as much effort to move it, or torque, and this means the output has only one-third the amount of torque applied. In summary, when gearing up, the output speed is faster than the input speed, but the output torque is proportionally lower than the input torque. For our example of a 1 to 3 gear ratio, the output of the gear system 
has three times the speed, but only one-third the torque. The next example of gear ratio is gearing down. In this example, the driven gear has 36 teeth and the driving gear has 12 teeth. This gives us a gear ratio of 3 to 1. With this 3 to 1 gear ratio, the input gear needs to rotate three times in order for the output gear to rotate once. As you will see, the input gear rotates once. The output gear will only rotate one-third the distance, meaning with this system, the output speed will only be one-third the input speed. However, since the input gear is only one-third the size of the output gear, the output of this system will have three times the torque. In summary, when gearing down, the output speed is slower than the input speed, but the output torque is proportionally higher than the input torque. For our example of a 3 to 1 gear ratio, the output of the gear system has one-third the speed, but it has three times the torque. In ideal conditions, what does that mean? Well, in the real world, gear systems have a number of factors which have to be considered. For some examples of less than ideal conditions, these could include things like the drive shaft having too much friction from passing through too much plastic a bent drive shaft, a warped robot chassis, an older motor with poor performance, or a weak battery. There can also be physical design problems. For example, with this design, the wheel is smaller than the gears and it won't work. A redesign would be needed, such as using a sprocket and chain system rather than gears. A common issue with gear systems is the design requires too much output torque for the amount of input torque available. This happens quite frequently when designing arms for robots. Solutions can include providing more input torque by adding a second motor or rubber bands. The gear system can also be redesigned to provide a geared down system to increase the output torque. If you're interested in learning more about gears, go to help.fix.com and use the search word gear. You will find many informative knowledge base articles there. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There are many videos of robot competitions and instructions there. Until next time, remember many times the success of your trip totally depends on selecting the right gear.